Hey everyone, we're just gonna wait another minute. Um, thanks for joining us for our public administration program webinar. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just see if we get a few more people joining us. Um, we really appreciate your time today. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, my name is Suri Deitch, and I'm Dean of the School of Professional Advancement, and I'm really excited to welcome you to this informational webinar about our public administration program. And if you are able to turn your video on, that's great. If you can't, we, we understand. Um, I'm just curious, uh, first off, if you could put in the chat at the bottom of the screen your name and um, where you're calling in from. That would be great to know. Um, the students in the program um, are about half from the New Orleans region or Gulf South and, and then half from across the United States. So we're always really interested to see uh, where people are who are interested in the program. So that's great. Lafayette, New Orleans. Um, Nice to see you all, Baton Rouge. So we got a very New Orleans crowd so far, um, which is great. That's one of the reasons why our program exists. Um, all right, well, if more people wanna share their names and where they're calling in from in the chat, that's great. Uh, I think people are probably pretty familiar with Zoom and Zoom etiquette at this point. Um, feel free to put questions in the chat at the bottom of the screen at any point. Um, our colleague Ann Conlon just wrote that in the chat. And then you, you, know, you should also feel free, it's not that big a group, you should feel free to take yourself off mute and ask questions if you want to. So, um, so again, I'm Suri Deitch and I'm the Dean of the School of Professional Advancement. And I'm here to make this presentation with my colleague, Halima Leek Francis, who's the faculty member who directs the program um, I'm going to talk more generally about SOPA as a school and um, what we do and our structure, our student services, those kinds of things. And um, Dr. Leek Francis is going to focus more on the program itself. Uh, but I'll just say um, you know, one of the reasons why I'm really excited about this program is because it is um, it's a perfect program for the moment that we're in, um, in the United States, in our political and social culture. And we seem to have developed a program that is very on target for the kinds of issues that people are facing in the civic sector across the country. And um, you may be aware that we are in the first cohort of the program. We just launched it this fall. And it's been a really incredible experience so far. Um, like I said, about half the students are from New Orleans are, and half are from across the United States. Um, we have incredible diversity of perspective and experience and age, race, ethnicity, gender, all those things. And we're, we're having a great time and we're really excited that you're interested or considering joining us for it. So let me just say a little bit about the School of Professional Advancement or SOPA as we call it. Um, Tulane is an unusual elite private research university um, for having started educating working adults as far back as the 1880s and, um, and arguably um, going back to the university's very founding as the Medical College of Louisiana, having a focus on applied learning and relevance to the world at large, right? The Medical College of Louisiana was created to fight tropical disease um, in, um, in this region. And um, those issues are still as relevant today. So um, SOPA is the 21st century iteration of that long-term mission and commitment on the part of Tulane. And so we are a school that offers 
applied degrees and certificates at the undergraduate and graduate levels and um, and humanities and social science programs that are uh, focused on working adults. And so public administration is right in our wheelhouse in terms of the kinds of programs we offer. Uh, we're going to talk about five different aspects of SOPA that we think are really valuable um, for students who are considering coming to us. So the first is online instruction and the quality of online instruction. And this is something that predates the pandemic for us. Um, we'll talk about programs and faculty in this instance, it's going to be the public administration program. And like I said, Dr. Leek Francis is gonna take the lead on that. I'll talk a little bit about how we support students through advisement and career development. Um, we'll talk about how we are geared very specifically for um, a really diverse range of adults, including many working adults. And then um, to end, you know, the, the fact that this is all within the context of Tulane University and, um, and everything that that brings. And again, like I said, feel free to ask questions throughout. So when it comes to online learning, um, we, we have a model that we think really takes advantage of the, um, the, the best aspects of learning online in a combination that works well for students who are busy and have a lot of obligations in their lives. So we, um, we are highly multimedia and interactive we mix um, what's called synchronous learning, which is what we're doing right now, a synchronous meeting with asynchronous work, which means that you do it on your own time. Typically our graduate courses meet um, synchronously once a month or more um, uh, within a required meeting once a month. And I think in some cases optionally more frequently, that's something that we've been finding students have been asking for in every um, part of the course, we call them modules, there's always something interactive, uh, whether it is a synchronous session or it's a discussion board or a group project or a peer review or something like that. And we work really hard to let you build relationships with your peer students who are really interesting people who, from whom you can learn a great deal and, um, and with your faculty. And in the next slide, um, we give just a snapshot of, um, of some statistics that we think represent our, the fact that we teach well online. So a lot of students completing a lot of hours, um, many master's degrees, certificate programs, and um, programs at the undergraduate level. Um, many faculty who are trained to teach effectively online. Um, this is at a time when all institutions are teaching online. It doesn't mean they necessarily know how to do it well. We feel confident that we do. And one of the ways in which um, we uh, measure the fact that we're teaching effectively online is through our award-winning programs. Uh, I'll turn it over to Halima to talk more about the MPA faculty and program. Thank you so much, Suri, um, and I am delighted to join you today. Thank you all for being here and um, signing up to learn more about our wonderful public administration program. Um, as Suri shared, I'm the program director um, for public administration programs, and, and our program includes a, an MPA as well as graduate level certificates. So um, I want to start by talking a bit about our faculty. So. As I think about our faculty, they are nationally recognized civic leaders who come from diverse backgrounds, diverse practice areas. Um, they have expertise in um, public policy, city government. We have a former mayor, as you see here, um, nonprofits and philanthropy, 
um, data analytics, smart city. So it's a very diverse mixture of that we have on faculty. Um, actually, Surrey is one of our faculty members. Um, if you enroll in the MPA program, the one of the first courses that you will be taking is her course, which is um, Public Policy Foundations. So we're very lucky to have the Dean of SOPA on our faculty as well. And our students, they benefit from the scope of experience that our faculty members have, as well as the networks that they have. A lot of our faculty members are really uh, highly engaged and willing to connect students with, with resources, with opportunities. So one of the strengths of our program is definitely our faculty. So as we look at the program itself and uh, what you will be experiencing, um, I, one thing I want to share with you is something that came to mind from an, another student who's currently in our fall cohort. And she shared with me that she was specifically drawn to the SOPA Master of Public Administration program because of its emphatic commitment to producing progressive, long lasting contributions to society. Um, that quote really rings um, true for me. And I, I find it very special because when we were the shaping the program and designing our curriculum, those were some of the things that we wanted to do. Um, our focus is on preparing civic leaders who can successfully navigate today's complexities, uh, those who are well positioned to be responsive to a lot of the issues that we see today. As Suri shared earlier, this is a really special program because it was shaped in this moment and it was designed to be relevant to all that we see today and also future focused and forward thinking. So those are some of the things that are featured in our program. Now I do have listed here um, some of the, the elements that are incorporated in the program. So you'll be taking 12 courses that focus on applied and real world contexts. Um, we do have a mixture of that foundational, traditional civic sector knowledge with contemporary practice. And again, our faculty brings, um, they bring not only the expertise from the field, but also those academic qualifications that are really important to this work. So thinking about flexibility and accessibility, um, as Suri shared earlier, many of our students come from many different walks of life, many different um, levels of experience and expertise. Um, they are varied in age range. So what we have shaped is a program that can be relevant and speak to those, those diverse experiences. Um, there are tracks for mid and early career professionals, uh, if you would like to finish the program in a year, you can do so in as short as a year. Um, if you are not working, that is, that's recommended that you not be working if you want to finish in a year. Um, but usually our students are able to finish the program or they're scheduled to finish within two years if part time. So that would mean that you would be taking two courses each term that would be fall, spring and summer. Uh, we also have in the program a new option that's a four plus one opportunity. So for those of you who are currently enrolled in our general legal studies program, you can get a bachelor in general legal studies as well as an MPA uh, in a total of five years. And we have on our call today, uh, Dr. Robin Ice, who is our uh, program director for the general legal studies program. So I think Robin just waved there. Um, so it's wonderful to um, have that opportunity for students who are uh, general legal studies students. And that's certainly something that we're looking to build out more and more four plus one opportunities for students who uh, seek to finish their bachelor's and their master's in five years. Next slide. So looking at the uh, requirements specifically for the MPA degree, um, there's seven core courses. Um, those courses include uh, focusing again on those contemporary issues. So some of the core courses that you would be taking would be th including topics like data, um, technology, uh, diversity and equity, which is central to our program. 
um, those would be some of the core courses that you would be taking. It's highly experiential. Um, a lot of times the coursework that you would be um, participating in in the program can be applied to your resume. So many of the courses have final projects that uh, require uh, that you engage with a, a real organization, for instance, in, in your final project. And then our capstone is shaped uh, as more of a consultancy where you would be working uh, with an organization on a real live pro problem or issue um, and be, being able to provide some expertise there. So again, highly focused on relevant practice and preparing you to hit the ground running when you go into the workforce. So those are really important for us. We also have optional um, concentration areas. So for some students, they want to build specialized expertise in a particular area. So our optional concentrations are listed here and we have an additional concentration that we just added in emergency management. So if you are looking to go into one of these four or, or one of these five areas in particular, that option is there for you. Um, as it says, we're, those concentrations are optional. So if you wanna pick your electives from that body of, of coursework, then you can certainly mix it up and be able to bring into your uh, expertise and your, your toolkit, so to speak, uh, information and knowledge base from all of those concentration areas as well. So here's some of our experiential components. And as I shared with the experiential components and throughout the program, it's really about um, providing you with the direct experience and resume building opportunities that will serve you throughout your career. Um, also, our experiential components leverage networking that can be beneficial for your career. So we have an applied research capstone. Uh, we also, for students who do not have uh, work experience in the field, we have an uh, internship requirement that we provide you guidance on. And then also there's a required residency that's in New Orleans. So even though our program is uh, structured to be online, you do have the opportunity to interact face-to-face, -face, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, as early as June, 2021 uh, during our residency. Our residencies are annual. So if you are looking at the MPA program, you can do some planning on the front end. So for instance, students who are in our one year track and they started in the fall, they would be completing the residency as early as this coming June. And for those who are on a different track, you can still kind of plan out for the residency. We, we anticipate that there'll be early June pretty much every year moving forward. So the civic sector um, is very diverse. There are many, many opportunities out there. Um, and as I shared when talking about some of the background of our faculty members, uh, they, they range from government, nonprofits, private sector. And these are some of the example of careers that, that some people who have earned MPAs have been able to successfully work within. Um, I've met a lot of people who have kind of floated throughout different career paths and journeys. And it's really um, in, in, in building out your skill set, um, that's, that's pretty common. So there are many opportunities uh, when you look at civic sector related co careers, um, there's opportunity for growth. And as you see here, there was, uh, there's projected growth of about 14% through 2026. Now say, this number was pre-pandemic, I would argue that it's likely uh, probably much higher at this point. But the point is, uh, there's a lot of growth, there's a lot of opportunity. And if you want to make a difference in your community, uh, certainly earning an MPA is a great place to start and a great way to do that. So I mentioned earlier our stackable or our graduate certificates. So for students who may not necessarily want to earn the MPA right now and they may want to focus in a particular area, we have graduate certificates. 
And our graduate certificates provide, again, that specialized expertise. The courses that you would be taking, you would be taking roughly about four courses to earn and to complete your graduate certificate. And a really great thing about this is that the certificates stack into the MPA. So if you decide that later on you want to come back, get the MPA, you've already done a good deal of the coursework and fulfilled pretty much all of your um, concentration or all of your uh, elective requirements through this through the certificate. So that option is there as well for students who are interested in perhaps taking a different path um, or maybe focusing on a specific content area on the front end. So with that, I think we'll transition into um, Suri talking Great. about student support and success. Thanks a lot. Um, and for those who got on a little late, if you can put your name and where you're calling in from into the chat box, we're always interested to see where people are from. Like we said earlier, this, this um, current program, the current cohort is about half New Orleans region and half around the United States. Um, from the people who've shown up so far, who let us know so far, seems like a pretty Louisiana heavy group today. Um, but um, one of the many ways in which we're diverse is um, our students being all over the United States. Um, and also just to add uh, to what Halima said, um, as she said, I am in, on the faculty of the program and I teach public policy foundations, um, which is for most students, the first class that they take in the program. And it's been so exciting to have students who are um, from such incredibly diverse backgrounds. We have students who are just out of undergrad, so have volunteer experience, but very little work experience. We have students working for the for local government, state government, and the federal government, and bringing all those different perspectives. We have former journalists. We have many people working in the nonprofit sector. Um, and the same is true of the faculty as well. Halima's background is in um, higher education and philanthropy and nonprofits. Mine is in um, government policy and workforce issues. And when we bring it all together, um, it's a really great experience for, for all of us. So one of the ways in which we provide a great experience otherwise is through um, what we call student support and success. And so that means that you have a dedicated career advisor um, for the entire school who is available to provide not just access to internships and employers, but also um, tailored, tailored advice on resumes and preparation for job interviews and things like LinkedIn profiles. You also have your own um, academic advisor. And so someone who can help you figure out what classes to take when, how to balance your course load with your other obligations, someone who can help intervene when you run into challenges, which definitely happens with our students because people have families, they have jobs, things change in life. Um, you know, for students this fall, I think that the um, just living through the pandemic is a factor in everyone's life right now. And so you get a lot of support from your academic advisor and from the faculty as well in terms of navigating this because we want you to come out with your degree or certificate in a timely fashion. And so we work with you to make sure that you can do the work effectively, learn and also um, make progress because that's, that's what we're here for. We also talk about um, credit for prior learning because um, many students do come in with significant experience in some aspect of the field of public administration. And so there is the possibility of um, working with us to develop a portfolio where you can map your experience onto the learning objectives of our coursework and, um, and actually have that graded and get credit toward your master's degree. Um, applying at SOPA is straightforward. There is an online application. Um, it has some essays in it. The essays are really important because we want to know why you're interested in this field and um, what you plan to do with the skills and knowledge and networks that you build 
while you're in the program. And we pay a lot of attention to the essay um, or to the essays. And so, you know, it's definitely something to work on and make sure you submit high quality ones. We also care a lot about writing in this program. And um, so we pay attention to the quality of the writing in the essays. There is an application fee of $50, which we will waive automatically for you as a thank you for coming to the, um, coming to the webinar today. And if you've already paid it, we will happily refund it. So that's just something to note. And you know, please be in touch with us if that doesn't happen automatically. Uh, we ask for a copy of a, an official um, current government ID, and then we will need transcripts from all of your previous institutions, um, undergraduate institutions, and if there's anywhere that you've studied for graduate work. Um, and you can give us copies of unofficial transcripts if you want as part of the application so we can evaluate the application, but then we'll need, we'll need copies of the official transcripts sent directly from the institution as well. On the next slide, uh, we'll give you our application deadlines. Um, we are coming up on our spring deadline. It is, um, it's January 1st, although to be honest, the spots for spring in this particular program are likely to fill before January 1st. Um, so I would say, get your application in as soon as you can if, you're, if you wanna come for spring. Um, I'll also add, and this is actually a little later in the slides, but we have, um, we have an institutional aid scholarship that we are giving to students, for, um, students who, who register for classes well in advance of the new semester starting. And so the early enrollment scholarship deadline for spring 2021 is December 1st. And students are registering for spring classes right now. Um, you, if you register for spring by December 1st, um, if you're starting in spring, you get $500 um, in aid off of, your first, um, off of your first course. And that's something that we'll um, do for you automatically. Uh, in the next slide, we have our current year tuition rate. Uh, so the whole program, which is 12 credits, is you know, around-ish $35,000, which is um, a significant amount of money. And um, we know it's something that people you know, take seriously as a financial commitment, but it's also, um, I would say, uh, reasonable, uh, quite reasonable tuition for the fact that it is an excellent program and it's at um, a highly prestigious university. It's important to us to um, keep our tuition um, reasonable um, at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. And so that's something that we work hard to do. Many of our students do take advantage of federal financial aid, including, um, including loan programs. And we offer some discounts for um, people in certain, certain groups, um, including active duty military veterans and um, some public safety personnel. For veterans, we also participate in the Yellow Ribbon um, Scholarship Program. So we make up the difference between our tuition and your maximum um, GI Bill benefit. The next slide shows, um, again, like I just referenced, our early enrollment scholarship, which we offer um, for each of our terms. And again, we strongly encourage you to take advantage of that. And um, that's it. The last slide is um, Dr. Leek Francis's contact information. Um, so we'll pause for a minute and see if folks have any questions for us. One thing I'll note, and it might be something that people are thinking about, we do not require the GRE as part of our application process. We don't think that it is um, a good measure of your ability to do graduate level work in this program and actually in other programs in our school. 
any questions that people want to put into the chat or say out loud? Yes, I have a question. How far um, completed of your bachelor's degree do you need to be in order to apply to this program? Do you want to go ahead and answer that, Halima? Sure. Um, yes. Yeah, so if you are in your uh, last year or last semester of your bachelor's degree, um, it would be a good time to go ahead and apply and you can kind of project out when you will be graduating um, before we enroll you in the program. Um, and the exception to this is the four plus one um, general legal study students. Um, you can go ahead and apply to the program and um, project out when you will be finished with your undergraduate degree. So we'll need your um, official grad. We'll need your official transcripts, um, noting that you've graduated or that that you've completed all coursework. Um, what is the exception with the four plus one? Because I kind of fall into that kind of category. Okay, so with the four plus one, um, you would be able to apply to the program um, your junior year, and we would be able to start you with coursework then. So. Uh, we'll be following up with, uh, Robin will be following up with general legal study students to offer guidance on exactly what you would need to do for the four plus one and the process for that, because it's a little bit different um, from the regular admissions process. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Well, feel free to follow up with us. Um, you see, um, Dr. Lee Francis's contact information there. You'll get a follow-up email from us tomorrow that um, has the contact information of our Director of Recruitment and Admissions, Sheila Gold, and also a recording of this webinar in case you want to listen to it again or you missed the beginning. Uh, but we, we really see the admissions process as part of building a relationship with you. And so um, anytime you want to reach out, with any question or um, clarification, we are highly responsive and, and really do look forward to getting to know you. Um, and I'll also say actually just something that we didn't put into the slide deck, but there are opportunities to visit classes. And so if you are in the, um, if you're in the process of applying for the MPA, you will receive um, emails that'll let you know when those classes are in case you want to visit um, one of the public administration classes before you make your decision about submitting your application or um, accepting an offer of admission. So that'll be something you'll hear about probably in early January. All right, thanks everyone for your time. Again, we really appreciate it and um, Please be in touch and, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.